What a privilege to be here tonight. My assignment tonight is going to come out of John chapter 4. And I just want to give you something real quick, and then we're going to tear the house down tonight. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to let the redeemed of the Lord say so? Uh, G5 is not a quiet church. We are a loud church because if we don't get loud, the rocks and the mountains will have to cry out, and we're not going to be replaced by a rock. In John chapter 4, if we can get it on the screen, I want to get this up here. Uh, I want to speak to you tonight because this is a familiar passage. And most of us have heard about the woman at the well. She came and she was thirsty, but she had no idea that the thirst in her life was way beyond just a drink of water. Jesus has this encounter with her. It amazes me that the God of the universe, how many of you would believe that Jesus, the sinless Son of God, who was on a mission, only had three years to accomplish it, how many of you know his time would be pretty valuable? And yet he goes off of his beaten path down to this village to a well to talk to a woman that most of us would not even give the time of day to. He saw something in this woman. It's recorded in scripture. So tonight, I want to talk to you on the subject, wanted. Wanted. If you're taking notes, write it down. Because I want you to know in your life, when I think about people and how lonely and how unwanted they feel, I think about people tonight in nursing homes that have not had anybody come and see them in a long time. I think about an orphan who is wondering, do I have any value? I'm thinking about people that have precious moments and have victories in their lives and there's nobody there to celebrate. I'm I'm thinking about people who smile on the outside, but in the inside, they're going, I don't know where I belong. I don't feel like I belong anywhere. I think about the girl that's always the bridesmaid. And she's wondering, will I ever be married? Will I ever be the bride? You see, here's what I'm discovering in my life. Maybe you've uh, uncovered this too, that it's not the magnitude of the gift. It's not the size of the gift. It's not even the cost of the gift. It's that they wanted to. Have you ever wanted to be wanted? Have you ever wanted to be noticed and yet you were so afraid to be noticed? Have you ever thought in your life, I've blown it to the point that certainly God would not want anything to do with me? You see, some of us are at a crossroads. Some of us are at a place called confusion. This woman came to the well very confused and She's about to have a theological moment with Jesus. I also think about sometimes when people do things and it doesn't come from a place of authenticity. So when you look at the beginning of this scripture in verse 21, Jesus said, talking to the woman at the well, woman, believe me that there cometh a time when ye shall neither in the mountain, in this mountain where we're standing right now, in this place where we are right now, nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Because you don't know what you're doing. There's a lot of people that don't even know 
what they're doing when they worship. They don't know the significance of it. That's why they don't put anything into it. Now, see, I know some of you have been goody two-shoes your whole life, and so you don't understand the rest of us that have messed up and done all kinds of junk that we're not happy about, how we just worship him because we know he's redeemed us, not by corruptible things, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we don't hold back. No, because I was lost. And he found me. I mean, can you see the gravity of this moment? Can you see that God is taking time in his son Jesus to talk to a woman? And he's talking to her about her worship. I believe that the Holy Spirit is here tonight and he's talking to us, G5, about our worship. And he says, the time is coming that you won't worship on a mountain and you won't talk and worship in a temple. The time is coming when the true worshiper, can you see it? When the true worshiper will worship me in spirit and in truth. He's saying, but the hour cometh, and now is. Tonight, the hour hath cometh, and it is now here, right now, tonight, on Tuesday Night Fire. He's saying, I'm looking for G5 to offer up a worship from spirit and in truth. And it's not about a building, and it's not about a mountain, and it's not about an old theological discussion. He said, I'm about to do a fresh thing in an old place. Fresh, fresh, fresh. You see, I'm concerned because I believe that the church is having conversations about old days instead of talking about the new thing that God wants to do in our lives. He not a yesterday God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today he wants to do something new in each one of your lives. He wants to open your eyes. He wants to open your ears. He wants to open doors that no man can shut. I'm not just being a positive preacher. I'm telling you this is God's heart for you and I in our lives. True worshipers. True worshipers, without discrimination. Not Jews, not Gentiles, not Samaritans. True worshipers. Not black, not white, not brown. True worshipers. Not Baptist, not Methodist, not charismatic, not Presbyterian. True worshipers. Worship the Father in spirit. Not in the mountains. Not in the temples. It's not the building that you go to. It's the building that you are. And you're reaching inside of yourself. And God is saying to you, I want you. Oh, he came looking for you. You're trying to run. You don't feel like you belong. But he says, I'm looking for people that will worship me in spirit and in truth from a place of authenticity. He's saying, you've got to get past your flesh and you've got to get into your spirit. You've got to get past your soul and your intellect and you've got to reach down and be authentic you can't be a fraudulent person who fakes their identity. He is saying, I will no longer receive that. I now want you to worship me in spirit and in truth. You will worship me. Read that. Read that with me real quick. It says, for the Father seeks. For the Father seeks. 
He's looking for you. He's seeking for you. This blows me away. Because how can a God who has everything be looking for something? How is a God that knows all and he's omnipotent? Science is written by the words that he speaks. How is it that he would be looking for something? How can you be all knowing? How can you have everything? I'm really caught up in that. He seeketh. See, tonight, I know in our theology, we're taught to seek God, and I believe that. But if tonight you can move from I've got to seek Him to He's actually seeking me, He seeketh the true worshiper who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, we get all caught up, male and female, whatever your ethnic background is. But He's saying, the only one thing that counts to God is that you worship me in spirit and in the truth and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know the Messiah cometh, which is called the Christ. And when he has come, when he has come, you see, that's the problem. When he has come is the problem. What she's looking for, what she's believing for, what she's hoping for is right in front of her. And she can't see it. I'm telling you tonight, church, of the living God. What you're looking for is already in front of you. But you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. You see, this is the challenge. When you're believing for God for tomorrow, and tomorrow's already in front of you. I was praying one day when I was walking down the road and I was saying to God, you intimidate me. This is when I was 18 years old. And I was saying, God, I I, I, I wanna know you. I, I wanna, I was pouring my heart out to him. And I heard him say to me, you already have it. You keep trying to get into a room that you're already in. You have it tonight. You may not see it. You may not feel it, but if you will begin to speak and understand that He is looking and He wants and He wanted you, and tonight the reason you came was not just to sit in a building, but you came to worship Him in spirit and in truth. I saw my brother Kurt here earlier. He called me about a year ago. He was in the hospital and I said, what's going on? He said, well, they're running tests. Later he called me back and he said, they found out I'm dehydrated. Now, isn't it interesting? You would think that when you're dehydrated, a light would go off, your cell phone would go off, something would go off. You have something going on inside of you, but there's nothing that tells you. Now, a doctor would know. But isn't it interesting that you can be dehydrated while everybody else around you is drinking water and it's raining outside and you can be in a personal drought? I got to thinking this week, it's really kind of picture of the church because it's easy for me to come into a service and go through the motions and be dehydrated I believe the woman at the well was dehydrated. She was in a personal drought. Have you ever been there? You go through the emotions, you say the words, but you feel empty and unhappy and unfulfilled. And everyone around you can be feeling the rain of God on them. 
you can feel shriveled and lost and unwanted. You see, I can't determine and I can't understand why the God of the universe would want me. Wanted. Wanted. Fall fresh on us tonight, God. Hydrate us tonight, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Maybe tonight you're here and you're going, I'm totally and completely dehydrated. It shows up that I'm lethargic and I'm moody and nothing works the way I want it to work. You see, the truth of it is, is that I am told that your body is made up about of about 65% water. The truth of it is, is you can live longer without food than you can live without water. He looks in this woman's eyes and he said, I know you want to drink because you've been in the desert called life and you're trying to make it all work and you're trying to answer the question, am I wanted? Am I wanted? I don't know about you, but there's something about being around water. I love. I personally love to walk on the beach and I love to pray. There's something about the water. Is it any wonder that the Bible says that we should be washed by the water of the Word? When He comes into our lives, what a difference He makes in our lives. Jesus is on His way. If you look at this scripture again, He's going to go through Samaria and He ends up in this little village by a well. And the name of the town, can you see it up there? Sychar. Do you know what Sychar actually means? It means the place of confusion. <laughs> He'll come looking for you when you're in the most confused place in your life. Which direction do I go? What is my calling, God? You know the confusing place you get in your life. I thought if I did this, I thought I would be fulfilled. I thought if I got that, it would make everything different. I thought of this, I thought of this, and I thought of this, and we keep thinking what it is. You see, the fact that Jesus shows this woman who had five husbands and was with her sixth, the fact that he shows that he wanted her tells you and I tonight he wants us. He wants us. Can you grapple with the fact that God cares about you? Can you understand anywhere inside of you that Jesus wants you He's sitting in a place called confusion, waiting for a woman who is very confused and he's about to bring life to her. See, I'm wondering if anybody in the room tonight would declare that God waited on you and that he wanted you. I wonder how many of you would understand tonight that your friends may have given up on you and you may have even given up on life. You may have even given up on God, but I want you to know he has not given up on you and he seeketh those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Every one of us tonight with incredible confidence in our lives should stick our chest out and say, he wanted me. He wanted me. Have you ever felt unwanted? He's never not wanted you. He wants you. He wants you so desperately. The water walking Jesus 
the Lazarus raising Jesus, the limb healing Jesus, set in a place of confusion to bring clarity in a life. Tonight, I want to ask you, how many of you will give him what he's looking for? As a body, corporately tonight, would we we be willing to say, if you're looking for worship, if you're looking for true worship, if you're looking for authentic worship, then Lord, I'm going to give that to you tonight because of all that you've given to me. Could we open our mouths and could we raise our hands and can we sing glory to the name? Can we say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? He sits by the well. She brushes her teeth and puts her hair in a bun and has no idea while she's gathering her pots. She has an appointment with destiny. If you will drink of the fountain that I put in you, you will never thirst again. God has a power. God has a strength. God has a wisdom. God has a perspective that you and I do not have. But it comes when you begin to worship Him, even when you don't feel in your flesh like doing it. He's saying, I want you to move past your intellect. I want you to move past how you feel. And I want you to believe me and seek me. He said, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. But here's what I want you to hear tonight as I close. He seeks you. He's looking for you. He's looking for you to do what only you could do. He's looking for you for one of the greatest purposes in your life is to worship and glorify and honor his name. And you've got to take your position. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care the situations in your life. And God doesn't either. He's waiting for you in that place of confusion. He's seeking you. And he's saying to you tonight, I want you wanted. You're wanted. You're wanted. You're wanted. You're wanted. wanted. You're wanted. You're here tonight. You may not feel wanted. You may feel like nobody wants me. You may be thinking, I've messed up so bad, nobody will want me now. This story is proof that no matter what you've been through in your life, God wants you and he wants you to worship him. He seeks you to worship him in spirit and truth. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Master and Savior, tonight, I want to give you the privilege to call on His name. He's been looking for you. The Bible says He'll leave the 99 to go find the one sheep that is away from God. He's looking for you. He wants you. Tonight, will you just simply say this little prayer after me? Everybody say it to me online in all of our family rooms. Dear Jesus, I'm lost without you, but I know you want me. And Father God, I want you. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I'm going to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. If you prayed that prayer, and you did, you are now a part of the family of God. He still seeks you. And now, if you want to seal it, church, if we want to seal it tonight, I want you to stand to your feet right now with me. And for the next few minutes, I want us to give him what he's looking for. I want us as a church to declare tonight that great is the Lord. Great is the power of his name. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to declare right now that your best days are ahead of you. 
We're clearing out some seats here tonight in case you want to come forward and just tell him, I seek you, Jesus. I seek you, Jesus. I seek you, Jesus. I seek you, Jesus. Anybody besides me that can say that tonight. I seek you, Jesus. I seek you above all else. I seek you above this world and all that it has. I seek you, Jesus. And he's looking for you in the name of Jesus. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready to worship him, church? Are you ready?